Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we've got quite a few things out here on the table because we're gonna learn how to get audio from an external mixer into an interface. So let's check it out. Before we get started, I'd just like to say, if you like our content here, go ahead and subscribe and get that bell on. You'll be notified on when we release new videos. We try to focus around a lot of this production stuff, and then we also like to do some tech videos as well. I got a really old iMac over here that's gonna be juicy to get into, so subscribe so you'll be able to see when we crack that baby open. All right, so as usual, we've got quite a few things laid out here on the table. We've got a small format analog mixer. We've got an ATEM Mini Pro from Blackmagic. We've got an iPad as a music source. We've got a few different interfaces here that we're gonna go over in just a few minutes. And these are all ways that you, let's say you had a podcast or you wanted to do a stream or you want to stream your podcast or you wanted to just record whatever's coming out of your mixer into a DAW or something like that. This is how you're gonna do it. So let's look at each of these items. We've done tons on the ATEM Mini Pro. I've done a couple of different videos about the audio on the ATEM Mini Pro, so go ahead and go back and watch that if you are interested. So let's go to our little analog mixer here. This is uh, a Yamaha MG102C, and it's a basic, basic, like, little utility mixer. We call it that because it gives you some inputs and some outputs so you can get multiple signals in and send it to a couple different places. It really has everything you need. It has XLR inputs for microphones. It's got plenty of line inputs. It's got, uh, along with line inputs on these two channels, it also has RCA inputs if you wanna run something RCA. It also has a separate two track input if you feel so inclined, plus a second stereo output that mirrors your regular stereo output here. So that's basically this little mixer in a nutshell. So now that we have the mixer out of the way, let's look at these audio interfaces over here. And I have three of them because all three of them are quite different in what they do and the feature sets that they offer. But let's talk for a second on what we are expecting to get out of our little mixer here. And in an ideal situation, what we want is a stereo output because most things, okay, everything sounds better in at least stereo. So having said that, and that being our ideal situation, we wanna make sure we have an interface that will work properly in getting that stereo input into our computer. So I have two kind of small, you know, two in, two out devices here. Uh, one is new and newer and one is old. And they're both very similar. They're kind of like, you know, throw it in your backpack and go kind of thing. Uh, the one on the right here is from Focusrite, and this is the Scarlet Solo. You've probably seen a lot of these little boxes around. They have quite a range, uh, depending on how many inputs you need. And then on this side, this is an old one. This is from Digidesign, who no longer exists. They are now Avid. They were sucked into Avid. This is the Mbox 2 Mini. These are very similar, but only one of them will work for the situation we're in right now. So let's take a look at the Scarlet really quick, the Scarlet Solo. On the inputs here, we do have a line input, but this is just a microphone input. On a lot of these lower end interfaces, they will have a combo jack here so you can plug a microphone or an instrument in or a line input in. But in this case, for whatever reason, Focusrite decided, no, we're just gonna have a microphone and then a single line or instrument input. You can change that here. Let's go over to the DigiDesign, the old DigiDesign and with this guy, knobs on front and a headphone out, and then on the back is where we see whether this will work or not. We also have a, a microphone input, a single mic input, but right here we have a line slash DI, so that'll accept both a line input or a direct input from an instrument. And then we have a second line input here as well. And that is what makes this box our go-to for this situation. So we're just gonna take this little guy as much as I love it, and we're just gonna put it aside for this particular demonstration. And of course, I also have my Zoom H6 that if you watched a video a couple weeks ago that we released, uh, I just recently picked this up. Now this guy can act, as, as you can see right now, it actually is recording our audio for this video. And this acts as an interface to our computer. So we'll set this up in just a little bit and we'll we'll actually run the audio into here. 
And what's great about this guy is I've got two microphones coming in, a shotgun and a lavalier mic. And then on this other side here, it's the same thing, but all four are these combo, all four inputs are these combo inputs. So it can take a mic, a line, and I believe a uh, an instrument level. So very versatile on this guy. And if you have one of these, uh, it makes this whole thing just a little bit simpler. And by the way, all these cables coming in, like I said, we've got our shotgun mic, we've got our lav mic, and then this cable here is a line output from this guy and it's running into our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera right over here. And that just gives, that just feeds that line input into the camera so that I have a backup, basically. And then we have our USB output going over to our computer. Let's click, quickly go over our mixer here and the inputs that we're gonna be running into it. First off, what we wanna do is we want to zero out our console. And all that means is putting every single knob or fader in its default location. Faders, for instance, in our case we have knobs, uh, should be at infinity or zero. So it should be all the way down. Uh, if you can see on the EQ, its, it's default position is 12 o'clock. We have our auxiliary send, that's also good, that's like a volume, so it's gonna go all the way down. Our uh, pan or balance, that's, that's gonna be in the center because we want everything to be straight center if we can. Our preamps that we have up at the top here, those are also going to be all the way down. Our high pass filter, we want that up for now. And then this particular model has these compressor knobs. It's a single knob that does some compression. It's not that great, but anyways, it's there. So we'll zero those out. And that's pretty much it. Our, our main outputs and our return and our monitor mix, they're all zeroed out. We're good to go. So on some of these mixers, and you'll especially see it on the Mackie mixers like the 1202, they have what's called a solo button. And what's nice about that is you can solo it pre-faders. That's a PFL solo, pre-fader listen. If you hit that button, this doesn't have it, but if you hit that button, you can actually see the level of your microphone over here on the meters before it even sends to your main output. So that means that we can hit that solo button and start talking into our microphone and turn up the gain, get our levels before anybody even has a chance to hear it. So for our demonstration today, we're gonna take a split of my lav mic and we're gonna plug that into channel one. Woo, stay there. These uh, playing cards aren't that sturdy. And then we're also gonna take a stereo input from our iPad. And just remember that right is always red, okay? And we're gonna come into seven and eight here. So left is gray or white and right is red. So let's get our audio running through our mixer and then we'll worry about getting the stereo output over to our interface. So we have our lav mic running into microphone input one. And uh, because this particular mixer does not have a solo button, well, we're gonna run this a little bit different and you'll see a lot of theater guys use this, uh, this way of setting up their gain. So we are actually going to take our stereo main fader out and we're gonna put it up to what's called unity gain. On these particular mixers, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's just a little arrow, like a little triangle that says, this is our nominal or unity level. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we have to feed these, these meters in order to see what our level is at. So we're gonna take our stereo, our main stereo fader, and also the fader on channel one, and we're going to turn them both up to unity or nominal level. At this point, we can start bringing up our gain on our channel here, and we'll start to see some level come in. So you, as you can see right here, we've got some level, and right now we're hitting about zero dB on a normal basis, and that's about what you wanna hit. Uh, we're peaking just a little teeny bit. We don't want it to peak, but you know, into the yellow is okay, hanging out in the green is, is normally what you want. So now we're just gonna play back a little bit of music. If you guys haven't seen this channel, Chilled Cow, go check it out. It's awesome music just to sit and chill and do your work. It doesn't distract you. It just is chill music, it's awesome. So we have music coming from there, but what we need to do is because we are still seeing this level here from our lav mic, so we're actually going to turn our lav mic all the way down and uh, we're gonna turn up our inputs for the iPad. Now make sure your iPad is all the way up. We want full volume off of the iPad if we can get it. And then at this point, because it's not a preamp, we're not turning up any preamp, we're just turning up the level coming into the mixer. So that means we just jump to the fader and we start turning it up. We'll start seeing some level here. There we go, and we're hitting about that, yeah, about right there. So. 
It's getting in the yellow, but that's fine. That is perfectly reasonable for what we need. And then we can also bring up our lav mic again. Hey, hey, check, check, one, two. Now we've got both going, and I bet it sounds awful. I bet the music is just overpowering the microphone because we've got both going at a nominal level. So now let's talk about how we're going to get the audio out of this. We've got a decent mix going on. We'll bring the, the music down just a teeny bit so it's in the background. And we are going to plug this guy into our interface here. Now, yes, obviously this isn't plugged into the computer. We're just gonna use this as kind of uh, a dummy box right now to demonstrate how we'd run it into an interface with two line level inputs. And the cables you'll need for that is these guys. These are, there's two cables here, and they are what we call TRS cables, or tip ring sleeve. And if you look at something like this, which is a, it's similar to the one coming out of our iPad right now, it has a tip ring sleeve as well, but this is what's called an unbalanced cable. So tip ring sleeve in this instance represents left, right, and ground. On these cables, it represents hot, cold, and ground. Uh, this is an unbalanced connection. This is a balanced connection, these big guys here. The reason why we want to use balanced instead of unbalanced, well, unbalanced runs at a level of minus 10, and balanced runs at plus 4. So it's a stronger signal, and you can run it for longer lengths. So for instance, with this unbalanced cable, 30 feet is your max on this, and you start getting signal degradation. On these guys, you're running 300 feet without any signal degradation. So you want to go with balanced cables if you can. Because these both look the same, I'm going to plug in one at a time to make sure that we've got left going into channel one and right going into channel two. So we have a left output there, and on the back of this guy, you'll see we have a line, see input one, line in. Then we're going to run from the right output into input number two right down here. And that is that. Now we are connected to our interface. It's very simple. Some of these boxes, like for instance, the Scarlet has a switch that you need to make sure is selected to line level. That'll make sure that the proper level is getting into your interface. And that really is pretty much it. That's how you get it into your interface. And what we're gonna do now is we will take these two outputs, we're gonna run them into the H6 here, and then we'll bring it up on Pro Tools and see what we're getting. So we'll make sure that uh, input number one, we're actually gonna go into input three and four on this guy. It's gonna go into input three. And then this guy will go into input Four. And that is that. Now for our instance, it, it, the way we have it set up here, we're actually getting two discrete microphone inputs and our stereo input from the mixer. All right, so we have the H6 set up as an interface into Pro Tools, and you'll actually see here in a second, it's recording what I'm saying right now, both my lavalier mic and my shotgun mic, because those are coming in inputs one and two of the interface. We have the stereo output of our analog mixer coming into inputs three and four of the Zoom. So let's jump over to Pro Tools and see what's going on. Now, as you can see, we are recording right now. This is my shotgun mic and this is my lav. That was from the clap, that little peak. What we're gonna do is we still have music and my lavalier mic coming into our mixer over here. But we have to set up our channels which I've labeled, labeled Mixer L and Mixer R. So I've, I've record enabled everything and we are tracking right now. This says, we got the pink recording bands of love going right now, so we know we are rolling. But in order to get a true stereo image uh, on this, we need to do really one thing. After we've set our inputs, as you can see over here, we've got input three, four, five, and six, which is three, four, five, and six. One and two is actually the capsule that usually goes on top of this guy. We're gonna jump in here and we need to change one thing, which is on the mixer left channel, we wanna take our pan and move it all the way to the left. And our mixer right channel, we're gonna move it all the way to the right. So now that we have our left and right pan set, what we wanna do is we are currently sending level out of this guy. This has our music going right now and it has my lavalier mic going. 
So, uh, but what we did do beforehand is we set our levels here to zero. And we're just gonna start cranking these up and seeing what kind of level we're gonna get going into Pro Tools. And that's actually a pretty good level right about there when it starts to get into the light green. So we're gonna match that on both of these guys. Whoop, too much. Let's bring this in. Yeah, somewhere around there, yep. Okay, all right, so that gives us input into Pro Tools, and it's really it's really the same with any other DAW that you wanna use, whether it be Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, uh, Gaul, Audacity, Adobe Audition, Studio One, Sonar, whatever you want. This is the, basically the same way to do it. You set your input, and then you make sure you pan left, right, and now you're capturing the stereo feed off of your mixer. We're gonna do one more thing. Now that we've seen how to do it in a DAW, let's actually run it into OBS. So we can set it up as an input device there, and then we can use it in our stream. All right, so here we are in OBS, and we're just gonna do an audio test scene right now uh, on this guy. We're not gonna run any video, we're just gonna run audio. And as you can see over on our audio mixer, we currently don't have anything. So we're gonna go into our preferences here, and we're going to go to the audio tab, and under mic auxiliary audio, we are going to select the H6. Now, there's many ways to do this, so if you think my way is stupid, do it your own way. But this is how we're gonna get it set up. If we hit okay there, now we've got a microphone level input here. So right now it's getting a feed from all four inputs into the Zoom. So Currently, it's getting just my two microphones, my, my shotgun and my lav, and then it'll also get the two from here. So if we turn this up and I stop talking, you'll see level coming in. It's just that easy. It's really simple. Then you could take that signal and run it into your stream if you're running on OBS. All right, so we're gonna look at one more way that you can get audio out of this, and it involves this little guy over here, which is the A10 Mini Pro. If you go back to the video I released last week, we went over a lot of different ways to get audio into the A10, and also we mainly discussed the delay issue that, that these audio inputs have. Because this runs over HDMI, HDMI is just naturally delayed, so the audio coming in gets there a lot quicker than the HDMI, so your voice is a few frames ahead of the video. So it's really very simple. We're going to use the same stereo out off of the mixer. And we're gonna grab one of these cables. This is a dual quarter to eighth inch. Uh, and it's going to be sending a line level signal over to our A10 Mini Pro. We're gonna make sure the gray or left goes in left and the red goes into right. Now this is about a 10 foot cable. So we're gonna drop all that over there. And on the back of the A10 Mini Pro, it's kind of hard to see because there's so much stuff, but we've got our two microphone inputs here, okay? We're gonna go into microphone number one. And that's it, all right? And I can already see signal over there. I'm gonna jump over to the software. We gotta do one thing just, just to double check ourselves. And in the software here, we have a little cog or a sprocket down here in the corner. And under the audio tab, general, we need to make sure these are set online and they are. So we have a line level signal coming in. Now that's a pretty hot signal right there and I've got it at about unity on our mixer. So I'm gonna take our gain knob right here and just turn it down a little bit because we are peaking. Okay, so those levels look pretty good. And uh, we are going to turn that microphone on. And now that is completely killing our program out because it's feeding uh, both our uh, microphone input from our main Blackmagic camera here and then our audio input from the mixer, which has a double lav mic, so there you go. Now, like I said, this is going to create a delay. It's just natural, that's just what it does. So we are going to do one more thing, and if you have the ability to do this, I actually saw a comment recently 
on our last video about one of the solutions to get rid of this audio, de audio delay was just to come out of the mixer and go straight into your camera. Yes, that's true, you can do that, but what you're gonna run into on a lot of cameras is that they can't accept a line level signal. Now, uh, this pocket cinema camera, the old school one, it does, you can switch between mic and line level. So if we plug into the, to this camera right here, I'm looking at you, if we plug into that camera, it will accept the line level signal and then your audio and video will be in sync. Um, there will be other cameras like DSLRs that that's just not an option uh, and you're gonna get some noise on it. Uh, so what I would suggest probably doing in that case is getting a delay box that you would put in line between the stereo output here and the input of the ATEM Mini. Um, you could also run the ATEM Mini, if you just have the regular ATEM and you're running into OBS, you could run this into OBS out of the USB-C port on the back and then run the uh, output of your mixer into an audio interface and then get it into your computer that way. Another option is to get what's called a direct box. A, uh, a direct box, that'll take a, a, a line level signal in. Um, they use it a lot for instruments, but there are specific ones out there that take, will take a line level in and spit out mic level. It also has something like a ground loop. I'll put a, a picture of one right here that I really like, and I'll link it down below. Um, they, they're not cheap. They run about 100 to 150 bucks uh, for a decent one, but that'll take care of a lot of the problems. And uh, you'll be able to get the audio into your camera. If you get that funny sound, you can lift the ground and it should get rid of it. And then you've got an in-sync audio and video from your camera. You can run it into the A10 Mini and be just fine. I also wanted to let you know that you can get mixers like this that have a USB interface built in, and they're not that much more. So for instance, you can get something like this mixer that's a hundred bucks for just the analog version. If you wanna get something that has a USB output on the back, it's maybe like 50 bucks more. It's not that expensive. So you can get a pretty good mixer for your podcast and getting audio to wherever you need it and record it straight from that because it is an interface. But if you have something like the Zoom or the Digidesign or the Focusrite, then you could at least get some signal into these guys. So that's pretty much it. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and get that bell on. We try to release a video about every week or so, maybe a couple times a week. We just have fun. We just kind of release videos when, when we have something interesting to say. Also go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have any other questions about this kind of setup, I always go through and I answer all the comments. So whatever you put down there, I will go through within the first few days and, and take a look and, uh, and answer to the best of my abilities. Well, thanks guys for watching. I hope you found that interesting and we'll see you next time.